Hey guys, typically my videos are focused around generating your own power through solar panels and storing that power in battery banks of one type or another. Today's topic is going to be slightly different. We're going to take a look at ways you can save electricity. So I have behind me here my electric water heater and this is probably one of the most energy consumptive products in my household. Now this is a 50 gallon water heater. It's the standard size for a single family US household here. And if you remember about two years ago, I also connected this six gallon uh, water heater before my 50 gallon water heater. So the way this works here is the well water comes into the six gallon heater, which is fully off grid. So most of my water heater is heated from off grid power and then it passes that hot water into this 50 gallon tank, which is on grid. Now I have the temperature on this 50 gallon tank set slightly lower. That way the element's not turning on very often. So I would say throughout maybe nine months or so, almost 100% of my water is heated from off grid power. This does work fairly well, but there is a couple of problems with that. First of all, the six gallon tank empties fairly quickly. So if you have two people taking showers back to back or even one person, um, it does eventually pass some cold water through to the 50 gallon tank, uh, which does drop the temperature a little bit. Every time this tank heats back up, it consumes approximately 1500 to 1600 watt hours of power. So I have this brand new 50 gallon heat pump based water heater here today that we're going to replace the six gallon preheater with. Now what makes this water heater so special is that it's not purely a resistive load. While it does have resistive elements for backup or quick heated water, the primary way this heats water is with a heat pump. And what that is is pretty much an air conditioner. So this has a compressor, refrigerant, evaporator, condenser coils on it. So it's actually going to pull heat out of the air and put that heat directly into the water instead of trying to generate the heat through uh, heating elements. And the process of heating water this way is vastly more efficient. So if we take a look at the energy guide label here on the old water heater, we can see it estimates $555 of power usage per year at 4,622 kilowatt hours consumed. And if we go over to the new heater here, we can see the estimated annual cost is only $104. That is quite a big difference. And this is the same size tank, 50 gallon tank with a 67 hour of first use delivery. I'm hoping we will see an additional electrical savings through dehumidification. So like any other air conditioner, when it operates, it is producing uh, condensate. So you'll see here on the front, there is a condensate drain. So as this pulls heat out of the air, it's also going to produce uh, liquid runoff that we're gonna have to discharge somewhere. And the reason that's a power savings is because I have this huge dehumidifier I run in the basement every year, pretty much all of the summer months. So with this water heater doing dehumidification, I'm hoping that this uh, dehumidifier will have to run a little bit less, thus saving power in that aspect as well. Uh, so before I get started in anything, I need to drain the water tanks out first. So I'm going to shut off both supply lines and discharge lines, turn off the 6 gallon heater, and turn off the 50 gallon heater. And now it's safe to drain out the tank. Alright guys, so I've got the new water heater in place with the old water heater there. And I've kind of got a rough plumbing uh, done there, just where I want to put the pipes, I still have to solder them. So before I get started with the plumbing, I thought I would do a bit of routine maintenance. Now on the inside of water heaters, there is a metal rod. Uh, it's called a sacrificial anode. And what that's designed to do is kind of break away to prevent uh, deterioration of the tank itself, because electrolysis will eat away that rod before it eats away the actual steel tank. Now, according to the manual for this Bradford white water heater, that is supposed to be inspected and replaced every two years. And they also indicate that it may need to be replaced more often if you're using a water softener, which I am using. So on this particular water heater, that is done by removing the hot water outlet port. I've loosened it up already. It was kind of a pain to get off, but this is the sacrificial anode rod inside this water heater. Let me just pull that out for you. And there is absolutely nothing left of this thing. This is supposed to be a thick rod. All that's left is the steel piece that goes down the center. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store and pick up a new anode rod. Uh, this one's got about five years on it. Like I said, it's supposed to be inspected and changed every two years. So definitely a piece of maintenance I will need to keep up with going forward. And here is the new rod right next to the old rod. What a difference, it's incredible. Now my local hardware store, Home Depot and Lowe's, didn't even sell these. I had to go to a specialized plumbing store. This thing cost me 48 bucks, so I was not expecting that expense, but it's good preventative maintenance to get done. All right guys, so uh, the plumbing's been finished at this point for a couple of days now. Um, I was waiting for some stuff I ordered on Amazon to finish the installation here. The way I have this set up currently is the cold water is coming into the heat pump water heater first. 
uh, the water then exits on the hot port and comes up and goes into the inlet on the electric water heater which is currently still on grid. Uh, then the water exits the electric heater and just goes up to my hot water supply. So at this point there is no power connected to the heat pump and everything is completely on grid with the electric heater. Uh, so today hopefully I'll be able to finish this up and shut off this electric heater and have all of my water heated completely by this heat pump heater. So I've got a new run of 10-2 Romex pulled here. This is code for a 30 amp water heater in my area. Uh, I just need to go find a piece of conduit that I can pull this through since this is an exposed area here. So I've now got the power source connected correctly and that comes down here to a double pole 30 amp breaker in my off grids load center. Very important to make sure there's a pipe on the end of this relief valve. So I've just got a shark bite connector and a piece of PEX. So I also need to connect the uh, condensate drain here. And this is just temporary because I want to see at this point uh, how much condensate this is actually producing before I go ahead and complete a permanent plumbing for this. So I just have it going to a five gallon bucket in the meantime. I will get that plumbed correctly. Again, I just want to see how much condensate is actually being produced. All right, so I brought my little Batrium display down here so we can see how much power this is consuming while we're testing it. So the key figure to look at is here where it says battery power. Uh, we're currently consuming 170 watts and that's idle consumption of the battery and the Batrium BMS that's running off of it. So let's go ahead and turn the water heater on. All right, so I see here it says disabled. Let's see, turn it on. In mode, energy saver, high demand, heat pump, there we go. And it says heating, I heard a relay click. There it goes, it's starting up. So looking at our display here, we are pulling 4,430 watts. Uh, that is significantly more than I anticipated. So I definitely feel cold air coming out of the side, so I know it's running, but I expected it to be significantly less power. I wonder if it's got those heating elements turned on or something. So I actually pushed uh, the mode to cycle it back to heat pump mode here, and the compressor stopped, and I can see it's still pulling 4,260 watts, so... Unfortunately, those heating elements are running. I'm not sure if there's a way to turn it off or not. I'll have to look at this a little bit more. On the data plate down here, the compressor rated load amps is around 1.6 to 2 amps. So that's more in the neighborhood of what I was looking at. This is going to be kind of unfortunate if I cannot disable those heating elements. Alright, so it's been about 15 minutes and I couldn't figure out how to do anything through this display here. So I did get the Wi-Fi connected, uh, which allowed me to pull up their app. And I found a message at the top that says this equipment should be in energy savings mode for maximum efficiency. So when I press enable, the display here turned from uh, heat pump to energy saver. And now I'm only seeing about 400 watts while the compressor is running. So that's more in the ballpark of what I expected because if you take 2 amps times 240 volts, you get about 480 watts. So uh, if that's going to heat my water at 403 watts, that's pretty awesome. I just have to hope that it's going to remain in heat pump mode and it's not going to flip that uh, heating element back on. Alright guys, so this did finish heating yesterday and I have the energy usage graph here. Uh, now this is energy usage for the entire house pretty much, not just the water heater. But you can see here just after 4 p.m. when I turned it on for the first time. And then you can see here at approximately 11 o'clock-ish when it started to decline and then the compressor shut off completely. Now these two uh, spikes you see here and here were both a few minutes of uh, electrical element usage when I was playing around with the settings. So this was when I first turned it on before I knew how to put it in heat pump mode. And then over here I was just messing around with it a little bit. So, so additionally around uh, 7 o'clock there were two showers taken back to back. And then right after that the dishwasher was run. So while it did take all the way from 4 o'clock to 11 o'clock to heat up that water tank, uh, keep in mind there was quite a bit of usage in that time period. So I'll probably have to use this for several weeks before I can answer the question as to whether or not I actually like it. I don't mind that it takes so long to heat. My two main concerns are that it's only using the heat pump and not the elements and then the noise it generates. So this is quite noisy. It doesn't sound too bad when you're standing here down in the basement because you expect to be near a compressor, you expect to hear that air conditioning hum type noise. So I'm directly below the bathroom and I can hear the hum pretty loud in the bathroom. Now I don't hear it in any of the bedrooms, so that's fine. Uh, I guess I can, I, like I know it's there so I can kind of tell it's there, but it's not so loud that it's, it's unbearable. 
Additionally, checking my condensate bucket, I have about a half a gallon of water after all that, so it does dehumidify quite a bit. I wouldn't say it's a replacement for a dehumidifier, but it will definitely reduce the amount of time the dehumidifier has to run. Another thing to keep in mind too is while it did take several hours yesterday to heat the entire tank of water, this tank's not going to be getting drained every day. You know, you don't use 50 gallons of hot water every day, I would hope, at least not in a household of two people. Maybe if you have a household of four or five or six, you know, more than that, you're using quite a bit of hot water. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied with what I've seen so far, um, and hopefully I continue to like it. But again, time will tell. I may have a different opinion after a few weeks. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down below, and thanks for watching.